Thank you for tuning back in again. It's a pleasure having you back. This is the Late Night Hour of the Podcast. My name is JT, and welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in to your boy. It's a pleasure having you right now. That's my joint, by the way. That's my joint by Chia Ginyo. I always play that song. I know you're probably getting tired of that. Or, if you happen to be a new listener, um, I like to listen to samba music. It's a type of music from Brazil. And if you don't know what Brazil is, then you really should leave this podcast. You should at least know what Brazil is before you hop on the podcast with me. But anyway... Oh, a few errors. Okay, I'm back again. But anyway, how you been? What's been going on with you? Me, I've been just fine. Um, it's four hours before my birthday. I gotta tell you, I, I'm a little nervous. You know, um, um, you know, the, the the podcast I did earlier today. If you listen to it, I was talking about. You know, just a bunch of random stuff, but I never got to really talking about how emotionally and how mentally I feel about my birthday. And I think, I guess I can talk about it now since I thought about it more. You know, I feel kind of disappointed to some extent because, you know, I feel like we all reach, we, we all try to strive for greatness. We all try to strive to be better at what we're doing. And I kind of get upset with myself when I reach significant points in my life, like my birthday or like Christmas, like the end of the year, and I'm not at the place to where I want to be, you know, economically, financially, or career-wise. And, you know, it's reasons like this, like why I work so hard. It's why I work so hard doing podcasts. It's why I work so hard trying to put myself out there is because I want to be in a greater position in life. Like, I, I want to have more relevancy. And you probably know how that feels, you know. Not saying you're a failure. I mean, of course, you don't got to be a failure to feel what I'm talking about. You know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people on this podcast who make six figures or more. But, you know, I guess it's like anything, man. It's like when you're on the journey, when you're on the journey to be great, when you're on the journey to establish a career, when you're on the journey to to building your foundation, there's going to be a lot of low moments. There's going to be a lot of low moments. There's going to be a lot of low moments where you really don't know if you're making the right decisions in life. But, you know, I just I just believe in myself and I believe I'm doing what I got to do. Well, yeah, my birthday's tomorrow. You know, my last birthday for last year was was terrible. My last birthday last year was the first year where I was back to Sacramento, California from going to college. And it was depressing because, you know, that first day of my birthday last year, nobody called me. Nobody checked in. I just felt really ignored and hurt. But the year before that, 2014, my birthday then, you know, I had a lot of people. I come out. My friends took me out to dinner at this really good Brazilian restaurant called Fogo de Chão. Round of applause for Fogo de Chão. Shout out to Fogo de Chão. And, um... You know, it was really good eating, man. We had a really good time. Um, we had a really good time eating. Um, I ordered a lot of good food. I got really fat and had to jog eight miles after that. You know, um, it was a good experience, man. And that was the first experience I had where my friends had treated me, where I had friends that were treating me for my birthday. You know, then the day before that, um, what was I going to say? The day before that, I... Um, I mean, the year before that, the year before that, I was in I was in uh, Arizona, and I was too embarrassed to tell anybody about my birthday there because I just I, I didn't think anybody was celebrated with me. But I um I'm I'm um I um what are gonna say? I feel kind of, um, like I said, I feel a little ways about it, but the same, oh, wow. I'm watching this video right now, these kids fighting in this high school, they getting it in. Now they jumping on one kid, that's terrible, I hate when they jump people. 
So, you know, I don't know. I don't want to do this this episode and be depressed all the time. So let's just talk about the positive side of things. Um, I guess we could talk about, let's create an imaginary birthday trip. Right now, let's just, you and me, create an imaginary birthday trip. What, what we would we do? So, um, in this imaginary birthday trip, what we're going to do is, first off, I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, close your eyes and just sigh. Just inhale and exhale. Mm, inhale and exhale. And when you do that, then I want you to imagine yourself being in... Imagine the landscape and the setting of where you would feel the most at peace at. The place I would feel the most at peace at is a beautiful beach, a beautiful white sanded beach on the shores of the Canary Isles or Cabo Verde. And in this beach is white sand and the white sand sits behind a a wave of water that goes directly to the horizon as far as I could see. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. On my wrist, I have a beautiful golden watch. It's the birthday present that um, I say some famous celebrity gave me. And in this beautiful scenario, I want you to imagine what would you be doing in this perfect setting that would fill you with the most joy. What I would be doing in this setting is I would be I would be walking around the sand with my friends, laughing, talking chatting, having a good time, beautiful women around me, I'm dressed in beautiful and magnificent clothing, kids running up into me and saying hi, asking for my autograph, asking for pictures, people talking to me and telling me, oh my god, JT, I love you, oh my god, it's JT, um, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful vision I have in my head of this. If I could go anywhere right now, if I, could, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just, like I got lost on it. Anyway, in this imagination, in this setting, then I will leave from the beach and I will get on a private plane to take me to. In this private setting, I will get on a plane that would take me to this beautiful place made of, a, I would say, a fairy tale land made of just amazing, gigantic trees like gigantic beautiful trees 100 feet wide where you climbed up in the trees and you saw elves and dragons and griffins of all different creatures of all different races all different things and yeah, yeah I get, I get my, I'm gonna tell you right now I have a very vivid imagination my imagination goes it goes it can be kind of crazy but anyway I would go there um in this perfect birthday, I would be able to fly, and I would fly to Mars. I would fly. I would be able to fly in space. And on this perfect birthday, I would be able to fly to Jupiter. I would be able to fly in the sun. I would be able to talk to the angels in the heavens. I would be able to to debate with the devil in hell. I would. That would be my perfect birthday. And the perfect gift I would have for my birthday. And once again, when I'm asking all these questions, I want you to tell me while I'm doing this, I want you to tweet me and message me on Instagram or on Facebook. And I want you to tell me what would be the perfect gift for you on your birthday? What would be the perfect mate? What would be the perfect place? What would be the perfect hotel? What would be the perfect car? What would be something perfect? Not not what you think you can get, not what you think you get in a promotion at your job. Can get. What would be the perfect thing that you want on your birthday, regardless of what? Your financial circumstances allow you to get. Excuse me. My probably would be um. My probably would be um. If I could get anything, mine would be the um. My perfect. My perfect gift. My perfect car would be a car that could fly in space. My perfect car would be a car that could fly in space and go to different worlds and go to all those galaxies and super Earth that NASA keeps telling us exist every five to four years without bringing us any proof or photos of the shit. 
Um, excuse my language, by the way. Um, also, my perfect house. If, if this could be something I would have, my perfect house. My perfect house would be a um. My perfect house. It's hard to say because, I you know what my perfect house would be a beautiful, 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 beautiful marble house, almost like a, a cross between a marble mansion and a marble and a between a mansion, a, a, a cross between a ma- a mansion and a castle, and it would sit on the cliffs looking over the ocean and looking over the sea, just a beautiful place. It would have golden carpets going through the lit kitchen and the living room. On the walls will be ornaments from all different cultures across the world. You'll see Egyptian statues, Mali instruments, um, swords from the Tuareg people. You would see ru- the carpets and the rugs will be made from will be sent from Morocco. Um, my TV screen wouldn't even be a TV, really. It'd be a projector, like an actual film projector in there. I'd have a room set off to a set off to the side inside the house that's in all totality a rainforest, like a literally literal living rainforest in my house. Then I'd also have like a swimming pool. Like I've always wanted a house that was like a world in and of itself. So I would have like four or five rooms. I would have four or five rooms in my house that are just literally based off of nature. They're literally just formed from a concept of nature around the world. You'd have a rainforest room. You'd have a Sahara room. You'd have a swimming pool room, an ocean room, a sea room. Like, and I've always dreamed about that. You know, just to kind of get off the sidetrack for a minute, um, shout out to my boy, um, Steve Harvey. He always said that, uh, he always quotes his thing. That um Albert Einstein always says, and it's and it's uh, um what Albert Einstein said, and it was the quote that Albert Einstein said was, "Imagination is everything; it's the key to life's coming attractions." And um, you know, I loved hearing that because it it verified for me. That the visions that I have in my head aren't simply figments of my imagination, but premonitions of something that I'm going to manifest in reality because of my power to get on the microphone and communicate with you. And that's the blessing of being a podcast. That's the blessing of being a comedian. That's the best blessing of being an announcer. That's a blessing of living in my talent and in my gift and trying to manifest my world with it is knowing that I can create the world I want to create by my power to connect with you. And, you know, um, even when I just said that right now, you know, maybe it's just me and I'm going to ask you, maybe it was just me, but did you feel something when I said that? Because right now I feel like, I feel like this weird realization, this source of power, like, you know, when I get behind this podcast and when I get behind this microphone and I talk about my life and I talk to you about what I'm doing, um, I get so focused on the work and putting in the videos and putting out the podcast and talking. It's sometimes I get behind there and I really forget what am I fighting for. And in those moments that I forget what I'm fighting for, I will always keep fighting. But there's a couple of moments, like I said, where I'll just lose the vision. and I'm not thinking about it, bro. Every time I stop to take a moment to really realize what I'm fighting for. Every time I stop to take a moment and look and see like what my brain, what my what my destiny is trying to manifest for me, it always, it always wows my mind. Like, like, um, okay, hold on real quick, hold on real quick, I'm, okay, I'm back, so I had to email my aunt about something, but, yeah, when I take the time to really just think about what I'm trying to manifest in the world, it's like, it's heavy, man, it's heavy. And I hate to get so philosophical with you, but I mean, I got to be real with you, you know, it's kind of heavy to think like God gave me this vision or whatever, whatever circumstance of the universe, it bestowed upon me this vision of a perfect world that I want for myself, that I want to manifest through my talent, through my abilities. And in some ways it can seem so big, but then at the same time it doesn't. 
And that's that's the interesting. That's if anything, that's the craziest thing when I talk to regular people because I always talk to regular people and they'll be like, um, like when I if I ever I've learned this in the future before I say this. It's really not good to tell your dreams to small minded people. It's really not good because what happens is is they can't see the vision, and when they can't see the vision, it. It's, it can kind of kill your dreams because some it, it can kind of kill your dreams a little bit because it, it can make you, I'll be honest with you, it'll make you feel stupid. It'll make you feel stupid that somebody who you'll see as a regular person, somebody who's your friend, somebody who's your family, you'll come to them and confide your vision to them and they might smile at you, laugh at you and tell you, you know what, you're stupid for that. That can't happen. But you got to understand something and I've learned this, I've learned this the hard way what my life is. Not everybody's going to have the same vision as you. Not everybody is going to agree with the path that you're taking in life. You know, so regardless, whatever you want to do. And it doesn't have to necessarily be entertainment. You know, shout out to my man, Little Duval. He's a famous comedian in the African-American community. And he put this, um, he put this photo up of this dentist that hooked up with him and gave him a cleaning on his teeth. And man, he, um, he said, man, it's a black brother who made it outside of entertainment, whatever, whatnot. You, you being successful doesn't e- fame and entertainment doesn't equal success. Success, success is what you make it. Your dream, your dream might not even involve being an entertainer or a speaker or anything like that. Your dream might involve being a doctor. <laughs> your dream might involve being a um, a veterinarian or anything else. It just all depends on what do you want to manifest in the world first. What do you want to manifest in the world? And that's another experience I have this year too, I'll say, and I think I should talk about it with you is I went through a phase for about, I'll say 24 months where I really was just 36 months, shit, 40, my whole life. (laughs) That's right. I went through a phase for about 46 months where I was just really lost on what I wanted to do with my life. I went through a phase where I really just wasn't sure what was I comfortable doing? What influenced me? What motivated me to get up in the morning? What made me happy? I went through a phase where I was searching for that. And um, and it was kind of confusing to me. And it, and it took a lot. Um, You know, because before this, I was doing songwriting. Because I, I have a talent with songwriting. I can write song lyrics. But the, the hard part about songwriting was, is I like writing song lyrics. But at the time when I was doing it, I didn't know what genre of music I would want to focus in besides hip hop. And the catch with hip hop is, it's hard to really make it as a songwriter in just hip hop because hip hop is, hip hop is a, hip hop is a pride in your own art type of art form. Like, it's not really, it's not really, it's not really smiled. It's not really smiled upon or took took up well to have people write your lyrics in hip hop. You know, it's just not. But you know, for those who do, they make pretty good money. You know, Ask P Diddy and Lacro. But um, anyway, um, what was I gonna say? What was I going to say? Um, yeah. So I was doing that first, and then I lost passion for that. Then I hopped into writing. I how to start writing fantasy. Because I have a really, I have a really, I have a really just amazing imagination, man. My imagination is just outstanding, man. I can create worlds, I can create dramas, I can create plot lines. When I make it in the broadcasting and podcasting world as a personality and everything else, I think I'm going to hop into being a movie director or at least doing an executive production of movies because I have so many great ideas for movies and scripts that I just write down and outline that I know can make millions of money and inspire a lot of young artists out there who are trying to find their way in the world. So I had that issue. And the problem with me being a fantasy writer was I actually don't like the concept of long form writing. I hate long form writing. I hate writing. I've always hated writing long form. I just don't like it. But so when I got into this art form, when I got into podcasting and I got into just doing personality stuff, I think I always knew this was what I was supposed to do, but I think the reason I was so hesitant about it and the reason why it took me so long to get to it was because I had read this book by Steve Harvey, and it was called Act Like a Success, Think Like a Success, 
And they said that, and it was talking about finding your gift. And my gift up until this point has always been my ability to communicate and talk with people. And I've always been known as like the, like the person who can break the ice world, the person who can get across his idea better than the most people, the person who's the public speaker. I've always been that guy. But, you know, um, I got insecure about it because I don't know. I, was, I, I had read so many things where they talked about, you know, your your gift is the thing you do the natural with the least amount of effort. And I do it with the least amount of effort. And that's the thing I'm the most best at. But I always feel insecure because I feel like that's the thing that's not the most natural to me. You no, know, I felt songwriting was the most natural to me. But what I had to understand was, is you, me, everybody in the world, we all walk a different path to our road to greatness. We all walk a different path. And sometimes our talents don't appear when we're a child. Sometimes our talents, manif- our talents manifest as an adult. You know, ask a person, ask the person who did, who made KFC, ask JK Rowling, ask, um, J.R. Tolkien. So I just had to really just step out on faith and say, you know what? Like this happened last year, really. I was riding and I was having a hard time getting my stuff out there. And one day I just was like, man, you know what? I'm out here trying to fight people to be a fantasy writer when I don't like fantasy writing. I'm out here trying to fight people to be a songwriter when I'm losing passion for songwriting. Why don't I fight them in my element? Why don't I fight them in my element? Why don't I fight my way to success in an element where I'm the greatest at, where nobody can stop me at? Why don't I do that? Rather than trying to trying to take up some an, another mantle. And Next thing you know, next thing you know, I, um, next thing you know, man, I hopped into podcasting, I hopped into broadcasting, and after a few, shit, almost a year doing this, man, I'm, I'm here. And I'm going to tell you right now, how do I feel about it personally? Every time I get behind the microphone, every time I get behind a video camera, any time I get behind any form of communication where I'm talking to you or standing on stage, I feel like I'm at home. That's exactly how I feel. I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I deserve to be where I'm at right now. I feel like I'm at the place where I'm going to do the best at, and I feel like I'm at the place where I can influence the culture and move the world more. You know, that's one thing I loved about T.D. Jakes where he talked about fighting people in your element. He said, when you put me in my element, I am most effective in my element. I am mo- I like, I-, I love that. He said, when you put me in my element, I am most effective in my element. And then he said, do you know what your element is? And I love that. Like, I don't know. That's That's powerful. Matter of fact, I want you to repeat that to yourself. I want you to do that to yourself. I want you to close your eyes. Not even want you to close your eyes. I want you to get up, whether you're at your home, whether you're at your desk at work. I want you to get up, walk in the bathroom, close the door, look in the mirror, turn on the lights, and say, I am most effective in my element. If you put me in my element, I am most effective in my element. If you put me in my element, I am most effective in my element. Do you know what your element is? Do you know how to defeat your issue? Do you know how to face the world in your element? You know, and that you no, know, that's why another reason I love TD Jakes is man, he has the best he has the best metaphors. He has the best metaphors for describing a situation and presenting it to you in a way we can understand. Like he was talking about the story of David of David and Goliath in the battle. And if you've never heard this story, then I'm sorry, I just don't feel like explaining it more to you, but he said, it was amazing. He said, Goliath would have, he said, Goliath would have fucked David up if he had separated David from his gift. He said, but when that little boy came out with that slingshot, he lit that giant up because he knew how to work his gift. Because what he was saying was, is your gift will open doors for you and put you in front of the room of great people. Now, that's the esoteric interpretation of it. I'm going to tell you what I think. And we're gonna get, we're gonna, we're gonna have this conversation. Um, he also said, uh, what did he, he has said? He said, he said, David didn't, know, because David became king after this. He said, David didn't know anything about palaces. 
He just he just got there because he was good with a rag and a rock. They said, but look how far he got with a rag and a rock. And whether you're Christian, whether you're Muslim, Muslim, you have to think about that. You have to think about that. Now, esoterically, that sounds great. That sounds like your gift to greatness is is going to be the ticket for you to success. Now, I'm going to give you the, that's the esoteric interpretation. I'm going to give you the realistic interpretation. Realistic interpretation is, that's absolutely true. You being great, you being able to deliver in a certain area better than anybody else can, will definitely get you to greatness. That's the reason why you're listening to me right now. There's at least 30,000 other podcasts that you can listen to right now. You're listening to me right now. You've listened to me for 24 to 25 minutes into this podcast because I'm connecting to you in a way that nobody else can. Or if somebody else can, there's probably somebody who's close to you in which I would want them to listen to this podcast as well. The reason that you're sitting on the couch or sitting in the chair or sitting on whatever seat that you're sitting in is because there was somebody who created that concept, who created the concept of a a device for you to sit on and relax on while you're at work, while you're at home, and he made money off of that. So your ability to deliver on your gift or your talent is great. It's It's true. There is greatness behind it. But what I am going to tell you is this. For you to find out what you're good at, for you to find out what area of life you do the best at, don't try to... um. You got to always understand and always remember this. Your pathway to figuring out what you're good at, your pathway to figuring out greatness for you, your pathway is not going to include the same directions that somebody else is there. Your map to becoming a your map to becoming great, your map is totally totally designed different than mine. There are certain obstacles that are going to come in my life and have come into my life that aren't going to come in yours. And there are certain obstacles that are going to come in your life that didn't come in mine because I couldn't handle them. But God knew God or whatever the universe, whatever you want to call it, knew you were strong enough to stand and fight those obstacles like a man. And so he put it for you to defeat. And that goes that goes with learning how to do something, whether you were doing something. And some people say that you can't do it well, but like I. I've seen this a thousand times. I've seen a lot of people who try to do something and because they're not good at it, they just stop and quit it. But then I've seen some people who did something and they weren't good at it. But then after about a few months, maybe a year of trying, you know, I like prime example. And I always, I always bring this, I always bring him up. I got a brother, right? Little brother, love him to death. His name is Jamari. He's a rapper. And when he first started rapping, he was 14 years old. And when I tell you he was boo-boo garbage, he was boo-boo garbage. He was boo-boo garbage. He was one of the most terrible rappers I've ever heard in my life. But me being his brother, I kept encouraging him. I kept encouraging him. I kept telling him, man, you know, keep practicing, keep practicing. And I remember, man, it was 2000 and 2011. Late 2011, man. He called me one time. I hadn't talked to him about four or five months. He called me one time, man. It was like, um, it was like, man, he was like, man, um, I just, I was writing some more raps, but I wanted to hear what I had to say. And I was like, okay, cool. Listen, I want to listen to you, man. Bro, little bro got behind, little bro got on that phone, got in my ear and started rapping and I was just shocked at how good he was. I was just shocked. Like it was like a a total transformation for how bad he used to be. Like he used to be uh, he used to just be boo boo garbage, but I don't know what changed. He just I think I think what it was is I think he found his style. Like I think he found the style that fit his voice the best. Like we all have certain things and certain styles that fit us best. It's the same reason why when you have a singer, even if she can't sing through six or seven notes, she has a few notes where she's just the absolute best at. Just like how I talk, I can my voice can go pretty high if I wanted to, but I speak the most normal when I speak the most confident at this level, at this range. And it's the same with him. I think he found that particular tone, that particular type of way of rapping, that particular type of way of saying things and giving off a melody that really manifested how great he was. And that's what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to 
Find, find, find your groove, man. Find your groove. Find, find what you do the best. Cause man, it's power in that. It's power in, it's power in doing something so great that somebody else can't do it. It's power in being in that. Because even when you're in a scenario where it's not by that particular, where it doesn't call for your particular skill set, your skill set will still stand out. You know, I learned that personally when I was doing stand up comedy. You know, when I went to stand up comedy, you know, even though my jokes weren't all the way that funny per se, everybody always said, man, you have great stage presence. You have a great voice. You have this and that. So whenever I do anything, my stage presence, my charisma, it always stands out. It always shines out like a light. And I always capitalize on that to give me success. That's why I'm doing podcasts. That's why I'm doing my personality stuff. Because <laughs> I'm fighting in my element. And as I tell you and I tell anybody in the world, you can never defeat me in my element. There's not a person, a soul walking this earth that can defeat me in my element. There's not a soul who can stand on the podium next to me, stand on the stage, stand on the platform, whichever place you want to meet at, in the street, in the nighttime, and fight me in my element. Because in my element, I am most effective in my element. You cannot touch me in my element. You know, it's impossible. It's it's impossible. You can't touch me in my element. Another thing I want to say too, and this is this this is kind of off topic, is I talked about in my other podcast is using the law of attraction. I'm gonna use the law of attraction right now, and I'm gonna say something to you. I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna use the law of attraction right now. You know, just ignore this little moment. I have 13 million listeners. I have 13 million listeners per podcast episode. 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 13 million. And the reason why I kept saying that over and over again is because I do believe in the law of attraction where it says your thoughts become things. And the reason why I want that number, that 13 million listeners, is because well, what happened was is I was looking online at the most listened to radio shows. And I saw that the top was Rush Limbaugh and he had 13 million listens per week. So what I said was, is, well, okay, you got 13 million listens per week. Okay, Rush Limbaugh. You can have 13 million listens per week. I'm going to have 13 million listens per episode. 13 million people will get on their couch, get sit in their chairs at work, get in their cars, tune on with their iPhones, plug up the iPhones to their car speakers, plug it up to the speakers in their house, and listen to me. 13 million people will listen to my podcast per episode. And I do 12, po- well, 13, 13 podcast episodes per Per freaking day. Per freaking day I'm out here and I'm fighting. So I have mine. I'm out here. You know, come get some. Come get some. I'm out here. 13 million podcasts per episode. 13 million podcasts per episode. You know, it never stops. And then it never stops either. So, but I'm going to leave this podcast off for you. And then I'm going to, you know, try to sound if my birthday is. Manifest your destiny, man. You know, this podcast is for you to have fun. This podcast is for you to have fun and relax. But at the same time, I'm always going to tell you the same thing I tell anybody. Manifest your destiny, man. Greatness isn't something that escapes all of us. Greatness is a decision of the worst. Greatness is a decision of your hard work. Greatness is a decision of the things that you put work in. It's a decision of what you want to fight and suffer for. And if you want to fight for greatness, man... Fight for it, bro. Fight for it. Fight fight for it. 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 Greatness is something that's promised to all of us. It's a pro- it's something that's promised to all of us. It's not something that you, it's not something that you can't obtain. When you see a Beyonce, when you see a Beyonce doing great as a performer, when you see a Jay Z doing great as a performer, when you see Steve Jobs gods you don't see him no more but when you see a bill gates and he's worth 60 billion dollars we see that one that one rich ass drug kingpin do you ever stop to think and wonder maybe they found out maybe they made the decision that they want to be great that they want to be great at something that they want to achieve greatness and they were willing to suffer and fight for it 
That's how you gotta look at your life. Now, granted, the last guy that said the drug kingpin, he might have should have made a little bit more of a safer decision and to be great at something else. But you know, hey, we all make some mistakes, right? You know, he just made a few big ones. I mean, really, I mean, this, theoretically, he didn't make that many big mistakes because he did make a lot of money. But anyway, um, we'll see what happens. So, um, more of the story is manifest your destiny, law of attraction. You know, keep doing what you got to do. And with that being said, my name is JT. I've been in this podcast. It was our most pleasure having a conversation with you. Um, it was pretty cool, pretty cool conversation, pretty fun. Make sure you tune into this podcast. Make sure you tune in and make sure you listen to me tomorrow and Monday. I'm be back again. Um, as you know, it's my birthday weekend, so I would love some birthday wishes. I would love some cake. And with that being said, thank you for the love. It's been great doing this podcast.